Hello government classes. This first video lesson is on the government and the state. When I use the word state, I mean nation state. All countries around the world are referred to as nation states. How is government defined? Government is the institution through which society makes and enforces its public policies. What exactly are public policies? Public policies are all of the issues that a government makes decisions on. The goal of a government is to make a country a desirable place to live in. Public policies include health care, protecting the environment, education, immigration, and going to war or peacemaking. These are just some of many of the decisions that governments make in regards to public policies. Today, the administration announced the program of war increased surveillance of citizens, massive deficits, and tax cuts. Mmm, tax cuts. Tax cuts make Homer happy because the government is taking less money out of his paycheck. That means Homer could have more money to spend on the things that he likes instead of having to give it to the government. What are the four defining characteristics of the state? The first characteristic is population. Clearly, a state must have people. The second characteristic is territory. If you have a population of people, they must have land to claim as their own with established geographic boundaries. The third characteristic is sovereignty. This basically stands for freedom, as William Wallace from the movie Braveheart was trying to establish Scotland's freedom from the British back in the 13th century. Sovereignty means that the state has supreme and absolute power within its own territory and can decide its own foreign and domestic policies. It is neither subordinate nor responsible to any other authority. The fourth characteristic is government. Every state is politically organized. That is, every state has a government. A government is the agency through which the state exerts its will and accomplishes its goals through its public policies. How have we attempted to explain the origin of the state? The first theory is the force theory. Basically, one person or small group claim control over an area and forced all within it to submit to that person's or group's rule. The second theory is the evolutionary theory. The state developed naturally out of the early family. Out of countless years, the original family became a network of related families, and once the family tied itself to the land, the state was born. The third theory is the divine right theory. God created the state and God had given those of royal birth a divine right to rule. The people were bound to obey their ruler as if they would God. Think of all the famous kings and queens from the past. The fourth theory is the social contract theory. The most significant of the theories of the origin of state is that of the social contract. Societies establish rules and laws to maintain order. Everyone agrees to give up some freedom to promote the safety and well-being of all. What is the purpose of government in the United States and other countries? The purpose of government is clearly seen in the preamble to the Constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. To form a more perfect union, the Constitution was built in the belief that in union there is strength. To establish justice, we have not fully attained our professed goal of equal justice for all, However, the history of this country can be told largely in terms of our continuing attempts to reach that goal. To ensure domestic tranquility, order is essential to the well-being of any society, and keeping the peace has always been a prime function of government.
Provide for the common defense. Defending the nation against foreign enemies has always been one of the government's major responsibilities. Promote the general welfare. In general, these are the services that the government provides in the United States that benefit all people. Blessings of liberty. This nation was founded by those who love liberty and prized it above all earthly possessions. Posterity. To make sure the government continues to thrive so future generations will not be burdened by mistakes of their predecessors. How can we classify governments? Governments can be classified by three different standards. Who can participate in the government? The geographic distribution of the governmental power within the state and the relationship between the legislative and the executive branches of government. Classification by who can participate. In a democracy, supreme political authority rests with the people. A dictatorship exists where those who rule cannot be held responsible to the will of the people. A direct democracy is also called a pure democracy, where the will of the people is translated into public policy directly by the people themselves in mass meetings. Direct democracy does not exist in the world today. Americans are more familiar with representative democracy. In a representative democracy, people are chosen to act as their representatives. The representatives express the popular will of the people. An autocracy is a government in which a single person holds unlimited power. An example of this would be Joseph Stalin's control over the Soviet Union. An oligarchy is a government in which the power to rule is held by small, usually self-appointed elite. Sometimes our government officials, such as the President and Congress members, are criticized as being an oligarchy. Classification by geographic distribution of governmental power. A unitary government is often described as a centralized government. All powers held by the government belong to a single central agency. A confederation is an alliance of independent states. The Articles of Confederation was an example of a confederate government. A federal government is one in which the powers of government are divided between a central government and several local governments. In the United States, for example, the national government has certain powers and the 50 states have others. Classification by the relationship between legislative and executive branches. This involves presidential and parliamentary governments. In a presidential government, the people choose both the members of Congress and the president. An example of this would be the United States of America. In a parliamentary government, the voters choose members of the legislative branch, but the legislative branch chooses the chief executive. These leaders are called prime ministers. An example of this would be Great Britain. Forms of government. This diagram gives you some examples of the classification of governments by showing you various countries. Where is the power? What is the relationship between legislative and executive branches? And who can participate? What are the foundations of democracy? Democracy is firmly based upon a belief in the fundamental importance of the individual. Each individual no matter what his or her station in life, is a separate and distinct being. Hand in hand with the belief in the worth of the individual, democracy stresses equality of all individuals. It holds with Thomas Jefferson that all men are created equal. Certainly, a democracy cannot work without the principle of majority rule. However, the majority must always be willing to listen to a minority's argument, to hear its objections, to bear its criticisms, and welcome its suggestions. In a democracy, public decision-making must be largely a matter of give and take among various competing interests. It is a matter of compromise in order to find the position most acceptable 
to the largest number of people. It should be clear at this point that democracy can thrive only in an atmosphere of individual freedom. However, democracy does not and cannot insist on complete freedom for the individual. Human beings desire both liberty and authority. Democratic governments must work hard to keep the proper balance between the two. What are the connections between democracy and the free enterprise system? The American economic system is often called the free enterprise system. The free enterprise system is based on four fundamental factors, private ownership, individual initiative, profit, and competition. The law of supply and demand states that when supplies of goods and services become plentiful, prices tend to drop. When supplies become scarce, prices tend to rise. We are not a completely capitalistic society. We have what is called a mixed economy, meaning the government regulates the economy. The government's participation in the economy is to protect the public and to preserve a private enterprise. How has the Internet affected democracy? The Internet has made participating in a democracy much easier compared to the past. Social media has many direct outlets where you can get up-to-date and instant information about the government at the touch of your fingertips. But keep in mind, what you post on Facebook, Twitter, or any other Internet source can come back and haunt you if that post puts you or others in any kind of danger. Remember the social contract theory, we as people must give up some freedoms to maintain order.